Oh, I'm WBZ TV meteorologist Barry Burbank, and I've got your forecast for the next week, and it looks pretty, pretty hot to me through the entire week. We'll take a look at that and get the specifics shortly, but just a recap now. By the way, happy July. June is a done deal, and it was a beautiful month, I think, across most of the region. Really was quite nice indeed, albeit on the dry side until we got the welcome rains in the last week or so. And last, yesterday we had an above average day. As you know, it was pretty hot with a plus 12 in there. So actually the month is going to end up almost flat in terms of the mean temperature departure. Hardly just almost at zero here. Last June, June 2017, was warmer than that. It was a plus 1.8 for the month. So June is over. Sad to see it go. But July is here and more summery weather is with us, that's for sure, this week. And we're looking at the number of 90 degree days over the last several years. Of course, the big years was... And in this stretch, anyway, it was 2013 and definitely 2016. So far this year, we've had three days striking 90 or higher in Boston. And one of those days happened yesterday when it hit 92 degrees. It probably will get there today. We're looking at it to, to get there before the sea breeze sets in, so that would make another day. But we'll be right out close to the edge, depending on when the development of the sea breeze takes place. But most all other places will be in the 90s, away from the ocean, and that means that's three days in a row, all these places hitting 90 degrees, so therefore it qualifies as an official heat wave. And beyond that, there'll be several more days to tack on, especially inland, away from these ocean breezes. It's all thanks to this giant high-pressure ridge here, pretty much entrenched now for a few days. Eventually, the weather pattern will change and will squash the ridge, and drier and cooler air will be coming out of Canada for next weekend. And on the periphery of this big ridge of high pressure, sometimes we get nasty thunderstorms which form way out along the edge of that ridge. We call them ridge riders, and this thunderstorm action happened last night. In fact, so much so that the radar indicated tornado, at least rotation in the clouds, up here around the Berlin and Gorham areas of northern New Hampshire. They had a lot of lightning with some hail and gusty winds. No confirmation of any tornado, but that certainly happened late last evening. And that fizzled very quickly as it headed southeast, only to be replaced by other thunderstorms which took its place. So if you know folks up the north camping, uh, camping up there uh, over the weekend, they were rocked and socked overnight by lightning and thunder and heavy rains and wind but didn't last long, and most of that action is all done, so we won't see anything going on here today. It looks like a pretty stable weather pattern shaping up. Uh, no thunderstorms can tend to form near ridges of high pressure. So the action is out over the Gulf of Maine. What this is going to do, actually, is help to propel a boundary inland to support some additional cooling along the coast this afternoon. With time, the temperatures will drop a few to several degrees there and may actually push inland a little bit. So varying amounts of cloudiness for a while, with sunshine out there too, sort of hazy sunshine, making it very hot. The air mass above us is extremely hot, so it's going to be warm at the surface too. Now you can see all this cloudness over the ocean. That's the development of a lot of low cloudness and fog, which may be around coastal areas. It may be on the main coast and hard to burn off on the immediate main coast tomorrow, while it should burn off along the New Hampshire, uh, New Hampshire, Massachusetts coast, assuming it forms later tonight. It should burn off quickly tomorrow morning, but may linger on parts of the Cape. Doesn't look like any thunderstorms tomorrow. The air mass is stable. We won't get any, but then by late Tuesday, there could be a few thunderstorms around. Heat index, basically what that is, is the real field temperature, what it really feels like when you add in the, the humidity to the high temperatures. So it's going to feel like 100 to maybe 102 to 104 degrees in Metro West westward. Along the coast, as that sea breeze commences early this afternoon and freshens a little bit, it'll push the somewhat cooler air in, not really that cold, but somewhat cooler air into some of the western suburbs. So it may fall into the upper 80s to middle 80s there from the 90s this afternoon. That's the way it's looking right now. So therefore, the National Weather Service has a heat advisory up in much of this orange area, meaning the potential is there for it to feel like 100 to 104 this afternoon. It's not going to be that way along the coast because that sea breezes will, will stop it from happening there, but in the Connecticut River Valley, it will be even hotter there, feeling like maybe 104 to 108. Additionally, for the entire day from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. on this Sunday, we have an air quality alert in effect, too, by the National Weather Service and the EPA from basically along and close to the Mass Pike and Point southward for ground level ozone levels, which will be increasing 
and uh, may exceed healthy standards. So those uh, certainly want to take it easy, especially those with respiratory issues. Falling down through the 80s in the beaches this afternoon with a breeze coming on shore. Not a strong one, though. High tide at 226. We've got water temperatures well up in the 60s now, so the water is feeling a lot more comfortable than it was just a couple of weeks ago. Air temperatures will be near just under 70 for lows late tonight, then rising up to 90 to 96 farther inland tomorrow, but along the coastal plain in the 80s and close to the coast, 80 to 82 tomorrow. That sea breeze will be going from the get go. Uh, a little bit of an onshore component wind, that, which will keep it a little bit cooler. These are the dew points. Anything when it's above 70, that's really oppressive air. And it's going to be basically in the upper 60s to low and middle 70s for the next several days, as you can see, taking us right on through Monday. Dew points drop down a little bit, then they rise up a little bit, and much of the time it's going to be without wind or just a slight breeze, so that means it's going to be very stuffy and tough to deal with. So take it easy over the next several days and stay hydrated, that's for sure. By the time we get to the 4th of July, high of 94, chance of a couple of afternoon or evening showers or thunderstorms, hopefully not interfering where the fireworks displays are where you might be going. Here's the hot weather continuing, but up in Canada, there's some cooler and drier air, and the weather pattern is going to change, and this whole ridge of high pressure will be squashed southward eventually, and that will lead to a change in the air for next weekend. And that will be introduced by a lot of showers and storms on Friday, and then the dryer comes in Friday night, Saturday and Sunday look good, although some showers may end on southeastern Massachusetts Saturday morning. Highs on Saturday, 76 to 78. Highs on Sunday, next Sunday, 82 to 84. Nice dry air. Maybe a couple of hot days to follow the week after. But until then, take it easy. Hot stuff this week. Have a nice rest of this weekend, and have a nice vacation if you're on vacation for the 4th of July.